Welcome to the O2 Arena packed press conference here today for a packed show <coughs> on Saturday night and uh, more importantly a packed house in there as well. In my opinion the best venue in Britain um, not just for boxing but for entertainment and I cannot wait here to get back on Saturday night after our fantastic May the 30th Royal Britannia card. Before I introduce all the gentlemen at the table um, ahead of a, another big show with our exclusive partners Pleased to say, six year exclusive contract with our friends and our head of boxing, Adam Smith. Thanks very much, Eddie. We're delighted to be back here at the, uh, the O2. Um, it's been an incredible journey so far with Anthony Joshua. Uh, and I think on Saturday night, uh, we'll see with, with the fans that are turning out and the opposition uh, in Gary Cornish right alongside me. I'm beaten in 21 and Joshua on beating in 13. It's fantastic to get those sort of matches together. We know Dylan White as well is on the card. Uh, he's hoping to get a uh, hold of uh, Anthony Joshua in December, but they've both got business to take care of on Saturday night. It's a very, very uh, exciting uh, uh, heavyweight clashes. It's also uh, a very exciting card too. Really looking forward to some uh, terrific dust-ups. Plenty of, uh, of spice and needle and, and fire uh, on the table here and in front of us down there. Uh, particularly for me, Dave Ryan and John Wayne Hibbert. I thought their fight last time at the O2 was one of the fights uh, of recent times and I cannot wait to see them go at it again. So it's a terrific night of boxing. We're on straight after the United Liverpool game uh, from eight o'clock on Sky Sports One Saturday night. So hopefully we'll get a really good audience to see uh, some terrific boxing back here uh, at the O2, the latest chapter in the Anthony Joshua story, of course. Uh, please also watch on Friday night at seven o'clock on Sky Sports One, uh, the Joshua story so far and the build up to his fight with Gary Cornish. It's a half an hour show, and uh, hopefully it's uh, pretty revealing stuff on there as well. So tune in for that. Uh, go to skysports.com for all the latest news and Sky Sports news as well. And we'll see you Saturday night here at the O2. We cannot wait. A heavyweight night. Thanks, Adam. Um, a card stacked with a big competitive 50-50 fight. Some of the best young prospects in the game as well. And I'm going to be talking to the, the bottom table here in front of me now. A young man on the far right, Lucian Reed. Um, already made his debut here at this arena on May the 30th, and Lucian back for number two on Saturday. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, I've had a great, uh, great training camp. Um, I've been sparring people like Howard Davis, um, Fred Watson, who's a 10 and 0 fighter, and I've been dismantling <coughs> some sparring partners. I've um, been training with Kevin Mitchell and Peter Sims, and been with their match with quite a lot, so I'm looking forward to showing what I can do. Thanks, Lucian. And uh, a young man who I'm very, very excited about will be making his professional debut on Saturday night, six-time national champion and uh, bringing huge support from South London and Bermondsey. And that's uh, young Ted Cheeseman will be making his debut on Saturday night. Ted, you, re you ready for the O2? Yeah, yeah, I can't wait now. Um, I'm in the Macrum gym with Tony Sims and I've got a great team around me, so just hopefully I can go out there after a good camp and put performance on for everyone to start my journey in the pro game. Another professional debut, a real talented young Southpaw light heavyweight, seen him in fantastic sparring with James DeGale and also Billy Joe Saunders. Jake Ball, ready for your debut on Saturday night? Definitely, yeah, more than ready now, more than ready. Um, that's a good hard training camp, um, some good sparring, so just can't wait to Saturday now. Bring it on. It's been, a, it's been a long time coming for you, obviously. We knew you were going to turn pro a couple of months ago, but the sparring really has been top class with Jimmy McDonald, obviously, James DeGale preparing him for the Durrell fight. 100%. The sparring I've had for this camp is second to none, so um, anyone who's in front of me um, is, is going to be sorted. One of already the biggest, biggest ticket sellers in London is the young, uh, very exciting featherweight Rhys Bellotti. Um, I saw an, art, an article from the, the, the Watford Observer, I think, that Watford and South Oxley will be empty on Saturday night. Sold over 600 tickets for Saturday and 2-0, two, and two devastating knockouts and, and ready for number three, your first time in a big arena. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, it's great. The sport's been great from around my area. Um, and I can't wait to show what I can do at the, in a big arena like the O2. Thank you. And uh, one fight, the Battle of Carl Charlton, whatever you want to call it, will definitely be closed on Saturday night as Danny Connor takes on Ricky Boylan in a, in a wonderful fight. And Danny, uh, I know you've wanted this fight for a long time. You boxed at the O2 before, and uh, now you get a chance to make it happen. That's it. Wanted this fight uh, for quite a long time now, since I turned pro. Um, 
really glad that it's like finally actually going to happen. You know, I've been after it for a long time, like I said. Been running up the mountains in car short and in the wind and rain while uh, Ricky's been on the old sunbeds in Tenerife for the OAB. So <laughs> hopefully it will all show on the night and uh, we're going to give a good, we're both give a good, a good performance. And uh, listen, just me and his fight alone is going to be worth the money they pay for the ticket. So um, hopefully we, we won't disappoint and it'll be a good night for Carl Shorten and everyone in the O2. Obviously, I know you study the game a lot. You've, you've watched Ricky over the years and uh, you know plenty of history. How do you see the fight playing out, and what's the difference on Saturday night? Um, I just see me winning um, by any any means, really. Um, got two or three different game plans, so whatever Ricky brings to the table, I'm pretty sure that I can contend with it, as I'm sure he's the same about me. Um, but we'll just see what happens on Saturday. You know, like he said before, talk is cheap, so we'll just let I'll let my hands do the talking on Saturday night. Ricky, we know you have definitely got one of the best tans in British boxing. <laughs> and uh, on a serious note, your camp out in Tenerife with Jamie Moore has been fantastic. I saw you in unbelievable condition and, and a must-win fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I know it's a huge fight for me and um, it's one that I've got to win. Uh, that's hence why how hard I've trained and, you know, all, 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 everything that I've put into this camp. Um, you know, I know that going in that ring on Saturday night, I'm going to be 110 um, percent. Everything's gone brilliant, we've had some great sparring, um, yeah, just looking forward to getting in there, you know, uh, myself, obviously Danny, Charlie Edwards, the whole of Carl Shawn, Sam, Wallet, and our, our whole area is going to be there, you know, I've done over 600 tickets myself, um, Charlie, I'm sure, has done a few, and I'm sure Danny's done a few, so. I've done about 30. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, so, so listen, the, the area is going to be empty and uh, you know, they're all going to be in O2 Arena and uh, it's going to be a great night. Thank you, Ricky. Danny, if you had done 30, I don't know where those other 400 have gone, but you let me know how safe they Tommy Martin, Tommy Michael Devine just on his way, a fight now, stepping up for the WBA Continental title at like well to wait and uh, the O2 Kind of like your home now, you've had some big nights here and, and another big night for you on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I generally can't wait for Saturday now. Um, I honestly believe that I'm going to shine Saturday and Michael Devine's going to make me look a million dollars. I've had a great training camp out in Marbella, thanks to the MGM boys. And um, I honestly believe that I'm a different level to this kid and I'm going to absolutely smash him to pieces. Very well. We'll see if you say that when he's here. Very brave, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> At least wait for him to arrive. I'm sure there'll be handshakes when he arrives. One, one fight I cannot wait for on Saturday night, and I think this is a real testament to both young fighters, to their teams as well, is Lewis Norman against Charlie Edwards for the English flyweight title. Now, this is a fight that, in my opinion, in terms of quality, could easily be for the British and even European flyweight title. They're two lads that don't necessarily have to fight each other. You know, Louis had a great career so far, looks like one of the most outstanding prospects in the division. Charlie Edwards has had just four fights. This is a fight that was brought on by Charlie Edwards and his dad, who, who called this fight on to me. And going into your fifth fight, it's very unusual to have a 50-50 title fight, which could essentially define your career at such an early age. So, massive respect for both guys taking this fight. Firstly, the champion, Louis. Um, this is a, obviously a big fight for you as well and, and could be one of the fights of the night. Yeah, really. I'm ready. It's on a big stage, and this is this is all I've needed. I've always been on the small shows, and now I've got the opportunity. I'm going to show everyone who I am and why I'm champion. What do you think will be the difference in the night? Obviously, you have greater experience, Charlie. Fantastic amateur career. Um, we've seen you got off to a fantastic start as a professional, but it's going to be all action, and I think the pace is going to be electric. Of course it is. Um, I'm expecting Charlie to bring literally everything he's got, but what he's got to realise is what he's got. I've got a better. And um, I've been crying champion on night. Charlie, obviously a, a huge fight for you at this stage <coughs> in your career. I know one that you and pushed me for, and uh, now to be involved in title fights and just your fifth fight. Yeah, it's so the one I've been um, looking forward for a while. Ever since I've turned pro, I've seen Lewis Normans out there. And I've looked at his style, and I think it gels great with mine. And I really feel like I've got, got his number. I can't wait to box him. I've boxed all around the world, as he's been saying, to learn one about my amateur career all the time. Yeah, the pros is different. But in the amateurs, I've always wanted more rounds. And now yeah, three it's a round. rounder. I just, just can't rounds. wait. Yeah, it's a, it's a 10 rounder. And on the night, I'm going to come and give it to you. And I'm going to take that title away from you. And it's staying in London. It's simple like 10 rounds is no problem to me. I'm inspiring, inspiring likes of Mark Conlon, 
Paddy Barnes, their levels above you in the boxing terms. So we'll see on the night, but I'm really looking forward to it. I know there's been a lot of um, a lot of banner, as it's called, on on Facebook and that of your family and my family, my brother and that. So um, I do, I don't want any detrimental things. I want to apologise to your dad on my brother's behalf, and I want to say sorry. So I've got you something. So you're going to need that after I take your title. Do we get to see what's inside? <laughs> Dan, Dan, Danny, Danny, move that bag. Thank you. Well, you'll either be ce celebrating with it or drowning your sorrows with it, but we'll find out on Saturday night. <laughs> because this is a great, great fight between two of the very best flyweights in the country. On to the top table now. Um, one fight which I'm sure you would have seen light up the arena on May the 30th was John Wayne Hibbert against Dave Ryan. These are two great lads and now evolving. If you look at the WBC rankings, now making their way on the world stage. The first fight um, was a great fight. The second fight at this arena was one of the best fights I've ever seen. And the third fight on Saturday night will be as well. Firstly, the challenger, uh, John Wayne Hibbert. Another massive night for you. Again, like, like Tommy, had some huge nights at the O2 and a must-win fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, um, 100% Eddie, you know, I, I know from the line here and I know I've got to win this fight. Um, you know, the last fight, I was 70%. I still had him in trouble. Um, I'm 110% this time. Let's see how he gets on this time. Obviously, you were controlling a lot of the early stages, two knockdowns as well, and then the fight just turned on its head. What lessons have you learned from the first encounter? Obviously, I see Clifton, yeah, and I've got a bad toe. You know that, didn't you? Um, yeah, I've learned a lot from it, you know. Um, I messed up a little bit on the, on the diet and things like that, so we, we rectified that and I'm ready to go come Saturday. Dave, obviously a, a fighter that's grown massively in stature, in confidence, in profile over the last you know, six months, 12 months with big wins over Tyrone Nurse, of course John Wayne Hibbert. You're looking very cool, very ready for a repeat performance on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm more than ready for this. Um, I'm feeling fitter, stronger than last time. Um, I don't believe John had a problem with his diet before. I think he's just making up excuses. Um, he knows he's getting beat again. Um, and I just can't wait for Saturday night. Obviously, same question to you. Two knockdowns in the first fight. Pick yourself up to come back and stop John Wayne Hibbert. Is that, you know, what kind of fight are you expecting on Saturday? Same I result am, in terms of the stoppage? I'm expecting the best John Wayne Hibbert there is in the ring on Saturday night. But again, um, he's not beating me. Um, I walked on to his shots last time. He hit me with his best, and I still got up and beat him. So um, if it, it, it's just no way in this earth he's going to beat me come Saturday night. Thank you. The, the first of our big heavyweight encounters on Saturday night for the WBC International Silver title. Um, I'm delighted to welcome a man who's boxed a number of top <coughs> cruiserweights and heavyweights throughout his career, been in the likes with Ariola or Marco Hook, and recently Joseph Parker as well. And um, there weren't many men that were willing to step in and fight, fight, fight Gillian White on September 12th and Brian Minto was one of them. So Brian, welcome and uh, we look forward to a big fight for you on Saturday night. We've had you here at Prize Fighter before and, yeah. and excited to have you. Thanks for having me. It was a, you know, it was a good opportunity for me. Um, just was, uh, I always stay in shape so I'm always ready and you know, tough, ta tough challenge obviously. Um, the smaller heavyweight, I've been there you know, for my whole career then I moved to cruiserweight. Um, so life's about taking chances and opportunities. So, you know, um, I just figured, you know, I'm going to throw my hat in and give everything I got, you know. I saw you on social media talking about how tough the Dylan White fight was. What have you seen of Dylan so far and what do you expect on Saturday? Um, he, he's young, he's got a lot of power. Um, he, you know, looks like he's getting better each fight. So I expect that, you know, obviously he's coming to fight and, you know, he's going to bring his A game and he's been in training camp. I believe at the Chrome, so I'm sure he's got a good preparation for for Saturday night. Um, you know, so I'm a veteran of the sport, so I need to be the veteran on Saturday night. Um, you know, I'm a friend, a fan friendly <coughs> fighter, so I always show up to fight. You know, it's like going to my job. I bring my lunch pail and I'm ready to work. So. Dylan, obviously, uh, as as Brian said, been trained out in the Cronk gym under the eye of Jonathan Banks um, here on O2 on Saturday night. And a big fight for you for the WBC International Silver title. Yeah, 
Yeah, um, firstly, I want to say thanks to Brian for um, accepting the fight. We tried for weeks to get um, a top 40 um, heavyweight opponent in the world and we couldn't. Um, I think I sent about 50 names to Eddie Aaron or something that wanted to fight. A lot of them was undefeated guys because I wanted a good test for this fight. You know, um, I'm 15 and 0 with 12 knockouts. You know, um, as a young and up and coming heavyweight, it's good to get knockouts, but it's also good to try and get some rounds and get some valuable experience. And um, so I was trying to get somebody who hopefully would give me that. And I think Brian Minto may be the perfect guy. He's experienced, he's mobile, and you know, he's a tough guy. You know, he, he, in all of his fights, he only showed up to fight. So I'm hoping Saturday that Brian Minto will show up. But I've been training for the best Brian Minto. You know, I haven't even watched his latest fight. I've been watching his old fights. So hopefully he will show up and um, you know, give me some some rounds, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, an agreement in place for, for the fight on December the 12th, but first you have to get through Brian Minto and Anthony has to get past Gary Cornish as well. Have you got one eye on that date as well, or is it all about business on Saturday? It's a bit hard to say I haven't because it's, it's a good fight, but um, you know, I'm focusing on Brian Minto. Joshua's got an easy fight Saturday, to be honest. Um, I see Gary Cornish going around if that much, to be honest. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just saying what I think, you know what I mean? You know, um, it's heavyweight boxing, you know, he, he might surprise us, hopefully he believes in himself and going there and um, proves us wrong, but um, I just see him getting sparked out early, like in bad fashion to be honest, and then, you know, I see Joshua getting sparked out by me in December as well, so he sparks him, I spark him, good deal. Tommy Gilmore, one, one man who certainly doesn't agree with Dylan White, and uh, we know you've got a history of, of bringing fighters on, and a massive opportunity for Gary Cornish thrown in the deep end, but I know he's had a great camp and you're very confident that he can have big success in this fight. The O2 is very lucky for me because the last time I brought a Gary here, we won the, the Premier League at the Darts, so I'm quite sure that we'll do the same again on Saturday night. But I think it's, I'm, I'm sitting back here and I'm listening, I'm saying, why is Gary Cornish here? Why have we taken the trouble to come? Because I'm sitting listening to Eddie and I'm listening to Adam Smith about programs to do with Anthony Joshua, they, they've, they've just totally written them off, we have had no contact at all with Sky, and I think when I look at it, it's been totally disrespectful all the way along to say that Gary Cornish has had no chance. For somebody who has never lost as an amateur or as a professional to be totally dismissed in the way that he has been, I think it's something that's brought shame in the promotion. Thank you. And um, <laughs> well, certainly haven't dismissed yeah. this guy. He's an unbeaten fighter, as I said, 21 and 0. He's, he's not lost as an amateur or pro. He's a heavyweight. He's come <laughs> to win this Commonwealth title. There's no disrespect from our side at all. Well, it's the first time that I've been involved in a, a top of the bill fight with Sky, where they've had no contact for people to come and film the boy in, in training and to interview him. And that's where I, I kind of take umbrage at this. You know, I'm glad that he's been given the opportunity because it's a massive, it's a massive step up in class. It's to to claim, uh, as we hope we will do on Saturday night, to claim a scalp like Anthony Joshua. I think it's, you know, let Gary Gary move on. But I think that if it's such a mismatch, why are we putting it on? Listen, he's going to get knocked out either way. If you beat Anthony, I'm going to knock him out in December. So either way, he's going to get knocked out anyway. So, <laughs> talking about the fight, Tommy. Obviously, talking, talking about the, talking about the fight. I think it, I think it is a great opportunity for the for the two of them, for Anthony and from from Gary. I mean, Anthony, as I said at the previous press conference, Anthony has done marvelously well, and we've been so proud of him as a Brit to have went on and won the. The Olympic gold medal. You know, he's come along and he's been brought along in a similar fashion to the way that we have brought Gary along. And I think that the time that comes times, and I think it's important for boxing in general that two good prospects should come together. And I think that the fighters will show on Saturday night. The two of them look in excellent condition today. The, the both of them are speaking, uh, you know, in a positive fashion. And I'm quite, I'm quite happy with the way Gary's went. I think his two trainers, Paul Geddes and, and Andrew Young, have done a great job. And I'm happy, you know, we can do no more and on Saturday night that will be left up to Gary. And I, I, I honestly believe that Gary Cornish will leave here on Saturday night as the new Commonwealth champion and create a bit of history. Gary, I know that um, I get the feeling from you that you don't mind going under the radar on this one. But a lot to prove and uh, a tough task, you know, on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. You know, it'll be, be one of my hardest fights to date. Um, training's going well. 
loads of sparring for this one as well. Been up in a you know, you don't get much sparring, but we've been quite lucky this cup. We've had good sparring. I've been quite lucky as well. I've had to get time off work, which has been a big help, you know. Yeah. Just have to work as a joiner. As a, all these boys, you know, they, they do boxing as their living. I still work as a joiner, that's my living. So I'm just really looking forward to the night. It looks like a good arena. I can't wait for it. Obviously, you have got the underdog tag going into this fight. I'm sure you've watched Anthony's fights as well. Um, how excited are you to go in there and test yourself on this stage? And how important is it to seize the moment um, in, in, at that time? Yeah, I'm really excited. You know, when you start off boxing, you look, you dream of fighting for titles, you know. I uh, fought for a title last one, fighting for another title this one. So it's no different for me. Another fight, to be honest. I'm there to win. I've trained hard. That's, that's what I want to do. Anthony, I know that obviously uh, there's always the focus on you and, and plenty of attention. I know where possible you try and lock yourself away and keep yourself out of that. But the pressure for you comes with the expectancy of the public to win your first major title on Saturday night. <clears throat> yeah, most definitely. Looking forward to it. Um, there's no business like fight business. But I have to take my hat off to Sky, my, uh, my team that I've built from day one. You know, boxing's a business as well as a sport, so I've definitely watch the champions before me, people that come before me, and I make sure I put myself in a good position. So I can't complain to anyone about no PR, no Sky interviews and stuff like that. So I make sure I put myself in a position. So I just like to thank you guys and my team as well. Um, I like to keep myself away from all that, you know what I mean? I just get on with it, it is what it is. But at the same time, without the push, without the hype, I wouldn't be thanking all you guys for coming out to come and watch us on Saturday. So I'd like to thank you guys for coming out as well. And um, Commonwealth title Saturday, following in the footsteps of some great champions. So um, good luck to Cornish, and we'll get it on and uh, we'll bring some entertainment. I've seen you in this training camp. I think you've had a, a longer camp and harder camp than you've ever had. Although you're expected to win on Saturday night, you know the threat of Gary Cornish. First time in your career you've faced someone bigger than you. And uh, you, you, know, you know the dangers of heavyweight boxing. Uh, it's like, I think since like 2008, it's all like, all of these boxes, they, we all have good training camps, but it's all a complement of what we've been doing for years. The mistakes we've made, the things we've done right, and what we're going to keep on doing. So training camp's gone well, but it's just a complement of what I've been doing for the past fights that I've been in. Um, Cornish, for me, I've got the underdog mentality. I'm coming in hungry, um, so it's no different. I've got that contender mentality just like him, so... Uh, I don't really feel the pressure. I don't really look at myself as the big I am. I just see myself as a young, hungry competitor trying to make my way in life through boxing. Obviously, the boxing world, social media, everybody's talking about a potential fight with Dylan White on December the 12th. Is it just a case of business on Saturday and, and then get the job done and move on to that fight? Yeah, most definitely. Just a, another date. It's been set. I respect Cornish for coming along, getting himself in good nick. And uh, as soon as I move on from that, you know, I'm not jinxing nothing. I'm not saying too much. But God willing, I move on from that fight uh, Saturday as champion. Me and Dylan will fight December 12th. We've got the British title on the line. He can have his five minutes of fame right now, and then I'll move on. And in a couple of months, he'll be forgotten about. When are you we'll going to be stop on. being fake and be yourself? And then we'll move on to. When are you going to stop being fake period. and be yourself? What about that? What about you stop being what people are expecting to be and be yourself? When? In what sense? Just be yourself. This isn't you. Sense? This isn't you. I spent time with you before. This isn't you. Stop being fake and trying to fool the people. This is not you, mate. Be yourself. In what sense? Be yourself. You know what I'm talking about. Be yourself. You come up acting like some good beer in punk. Be yourself, man. What's wrong with you? Listen, you're getting hurt December. I'm telling you now. Focus I'm going to mess Saturday. you up. You're lucky to be on my undercard. Just focus on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the undercard because I kicked your ass before. I'm going to do it again. You look punk. Do you know what I mean? Fool. Focus on Saturday. Okay. You're a fool, bro. Don't talk rubbish, man. I think... Uh, You're going to get bashed up. We'll see. We've got a bit of work to do first. And he's then, getting uh, bashed up. I don't care what the wreck. He's getting bashed up. Remember I tell you now, he's getting bashed up. Act that you you're you're this good boy. We could be back here next week for another press conference. Go serve up, man, and don't come up here talk rubbish about being a yonder car. Right, listen. So we're gonna break now, and we're gonna have head to heads, and we look forward to a great night on Saturday, and many more great nights in the very near future for British boxing. Thank you all for coming. Roll on Saturday night.